To understand how vascular risk factors lead to vascular disease, we need to start with the anatomy of the artery. The very inside is called the lumen, which is where the blood goes. Outside of that is the endothelium, which is the inner cell layer, then the inner elastic membrane, then a very thick, smooth muscle layer, the outer elastic membrane, and the tunica adventitia, which is the outer jacket. CO2 levels are detected by the endothelium, and that causes it to release nitric oxide, which causes the smooth muscle layer to relax and dilate. This allows more blood to be carried through the wider tube, essentially, and that carries away carbon dioxide and brings more oxygen and glucose to cells that are working harder. The traditional risk factors are hypertension, high cholesterol, diabetes, smoking, and maybe hyperhomocysteinemia, although we're not sure about that yet. And these are well known. They both work through two final pathways. One is arteriosclerosis, which is artery hardening. Two is atherosclerosis, which is artery fattening. First, arteriosclerosis is from an impaired endothelium which can't make or else use nitric oxide properly so the muscle doesn't relax and the lumen stays narrow when blood is needed leading to something called ischemia or insufficient blood supply. Atherosclerosis is from impaired fatty acid clearance from the blood. Immune cells, mainly monocytes, pick this up and then they invade the endothelium and cause narrowing of the lumen. There are two basic outcomes from these processes. One is loss of the lumen, either slowly by atheroma or fast via rupture and clot, and aneurysm, in which a fragile artery balloons. In the brain, this is stroke. In the heart, it's heart attack, but any vascular bed can be affected. Therefore, all risk factors work through arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis, leading to loss of blood supply by occlusion or aneurysm, so it's important to treat aggressively.